Today, we are honored and privileged Thank you. Um, today we are honored and privileged to witness the launch of this great project. A project that is taking up three, taking up uh, five mighty big institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, without fear or favor, I recognize the presence of Mbarara University of Science and Technology. Welcome Massachusetts General Hospital. Welcome Kwame Kuruma University of Science and Technology. I thought the different universities would clap for each other. I'll start again. Welcome, Barra University of Science and Technology. Thank you. Let us welcome and recognize the presence of Massachusetts General Hospital. Still with us, we do have Kwame Kuruma University of Science and Technology. Yes, and with us also we have the multiple principal investigators of, uh, oh sorry, I'll say that again. We do have the Corsese. Recording in progress. Oh, sorry about that. They're just recording now. Uh, we do welcome the Corsese and they are also with us online. Uh, we welcome and recognize the presence of... Um, I'll request that Professor will say it in full, uh, the MPI, MIT, which is uh, Massachusetts uh, Info Institute of Technology. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, allow me to welcome our Vice Chancellor, the officer in charge, Professor Celestino Oboa, to give us the remarks, opening remarks, and give us the story of the journey. Professor, we trust that you're going to move like a soldier and tell us how it moved. Thank you so much. <laughs> that is the soldier. Please clap for the soldier. Come again. <laughs> Sanitizer, Thank you, um, Madam Angela, for recognizing and welcoming us to this launch. I have a few minutes to share with you just a brief on the Barra University of Science Technology Data Science Research Hub, uh, codenamed Madshri, which we have been granted by the National Institute of Health uh, together with the uh, Fogarty International Center. Uh, in brief, um, I think it's not working. Okay. Sorry. I requested that I'm allowed to speak without the mask on uh, so that my aging tongue can, easy, can easily be uh, audible to everybody. Uh, sometime, uh, probably early or late last year, we responded to uh, an NIH call for data sciences initiative in Africa. Uh, the call was um, uh, in effect to try to utilize uh, the technology of data sciences to improve not only diagnosis of diseases, but also improve treatment and impact on treatment outcomes. So data sciences do hold great promise for, for us in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, it uh, provides us with research capacity and appropriate training, which is rather limited in Africa. Uh, we are aware that uh, medical images are particularly exciting for data sciences, and in our setting, it really gives us ability to facilitate uh, care delivery across our health cadres. Uh, it is also recognized that efforts to translate the knowledge gained through data science 
uh, into improved clinical care can be fostered through implementation science. And I guess that most of you in this audience, both those online and those in the audience here, have heard something about data science or you'll hear about it today. And implementation science, which you have also heard about uh, some time maybe back, but you you will get more you get to learn more about it. In this uh, endeavor, we intend to utilize uh, multidisciplinary and multi-institutional partnerships uh, for key developments and uh, and ultimate impact of data science for African-based solutions. Uh, we are not looking for problems, but we are trying to look for solutions uh, in, in our setup. The, the overarching aim for the metry uh, is that we intend to use data science uh, with medical images for advancing clinical care and to integrate data science with implementation science to promote clinical impact. Now the metro will use multiple technologies to improve in, uh, the capture of medical images and employ key data science methods such as machine learning and artificial intelligence to expand their utilization in sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, uh, to some of us, machine learning might sound strange uh, or artificial intelligence might sound strange, but that is where science is taking us today. Uh, when we provide information to uh, these computer programs or software, where then this is translated into ability to recognize either some information, be able to give us diagnosis, be able to give us treatment modalities, that is the application of these technologies. Now, clinical impact will be strengthened through implementation science. These are methodologies that are used to see how to translate the knowledge, the information we have into better impact for care. Now, and we shall also have formal training which will be availed to, for both data science and implementation science. And, and also we shall utilize ongoing expansion of efforts to promote, which will be promoted through regional summits and collaboration. So this is not only a project that is going to be dealing with us in Barra here only, but it has a regional impact. It will, which, it, it, that, that when you look at the regional call, it is talking of data, data science in, initiative in Africa, meaning that there are several, uh, we shall have networks to work with different consortia within the African region. And perhaps to just let you know that uh, from what I know so far, there have been only seven awards in Africa. That of the several hundreds or thousands who applied for this grant, only seven grants have been awarded. And Barara University uh, has been uh, one of those with their partners. Now, in terms of uh, the management of this grant, uh, as um, Angela tried to say, we have a multiple uh, program director or uh, principal investigator arrangement uh, because of the recognition of the fact that there are different aspects to this, um, to this uh, grant. Dr. Leo Selly, who is uh, a multiple PI, he will be responsible for data sciences. He is based at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And as you know, that is a great institute for innovations and for development of new technologies and new approaches to, uh, to utilization of sciences. So we are very uh, grateful that uh, Dr. Leo Selly uh, has been able to, to join us and work with us in this application. Dr. Leo Selly, I'm sure you are listening. Thank you so much uh, for this. And with this, you are now introduced into the Mbara University uh, fraternity. The other multiple PI is Dr. Jessica Heber, uh, who is also a multiple PI in charge of implementation science. Uh, Dr. Jessica is not new to most of us in Barrera here. She has been working with a number of us here. She's based at the Massachusetts General Hospital, and she will be uh, responsible for training of, 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 of not only 
uh, the trainees on this program, but also us who are partners in this program on issues to do with implementation science. And of course, uh, yours truly, who is the contact PI uh, and also the research hub director. Uh, I, my job will be to try to uh, coordinate uh, everything and also respond to the, to the funder uh, with respect to this grant. Uh, we have Dr. Edith Wakida, who is the research hub deputy director, but also the administrative core lead. Uh, so this project has different cores. So we have the administrative core, uh, which is going to be led by uh, Edith. Then we have uh, two research cores, one led by Dr. Ngonzi, which I'm going to talk about now, and another one led by Simon Alunga, who is online now because he's went, he went to Nairobi, I think, he's with, with his colleagues in Nairobi. And then we have the... Um, the data management and analysis, which is going to be led by uh, Fred um, Kagwa. We have, of course, these are core investigators I'm going to talk about shortly. There is the program implementation committee, which uh, we, I think in the process of overview of the project that Dr. Edith is going to talk about, she will mention the details of that uh, committee. And then we shall have a scientific advisory board uh, that will be also constituted and this we shall have some locals and some internationals as well I talked about co-investigators and and the other partners so I have mentioned dr. Simon Arunga uh, who is going to be the co-investigator in charge of the multimodal database of retina images in Africa uh, codenamed Modria uh, he's based at Bara University of Science and Technology Department of ophthalmology he has colleagues with whom he's working with locally here at Mbarara but also is going to be working with colleagues from the uh, College of uh, the Eastern Central and Southern Africa College of Ophthalmology of Eastern Central uh, uh, and Southern Africa Dr. Michael Gishanga, Gishangi uh, who is going to be our co-investigator based in Nairobi at the college uh, there and right now Dr. Ronga actually is with him and I'm hoping that Michael Gishangi is online. Michael, welcome, and thank you very much for your partnership. Then the other, that, uh, the other research core is uh, headed by Dr. Joseph Ngonzi, uh, now Dean, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, he is, is a co-investigator in charge of the automated visual evaluation and geospatial mapping, or in, in brief, AVEMAP. This is going to be dealing with... Uh, uh, the common one of the common cancers killing mini cervical cancer uh, on the best way to apply images from this to, to machine learning uh, and, and artificial intelligence he is going to be working with a partner from uh, Ghana uh, Dr. Thomas uh, Coney who is a co-investigator for the AVEMAP uh, in Ghana or Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Thomas thank you so much if you're listening uh, you're welcome to Mbara University and you're also welcome to the Madshe. Oh, the third uh, co-investigator is Dr. Fred Kagwa, uh, who is, uh, will be in charge of the data management and analysis at MAST. He's going to be working with the, Dr. Leo Selly, who is based at the Massachusetts Institute of uh, Technology. So all this, you can see the different uh, activities that are going to be involved. There will also be regional meetings of PIs of this project. There will be consortium meetings that we shall be participating in and the opportunity for us to share our data uh, and information uh, with other uh, um, uh, centers uh, like that which is going to be established in Barra. Uh, that for me is an opportunity, was just an opportunity to introduce you to this project and also to introduce my co-investigators and my multiple PI partners, of whom I'm very thankful for them for sparing time and effort uh, as we wrote this project. It was not an easy um, grant to apply for, uh, because at the beginning, most of us did not understand what direction to take. And uh, we almost said, no, we are not going to attempt this application. But uh, we have very persuasive people who said, let us try. It is better to try and fail than not to try. 
fortunately we did not fail and the efforts that everybody has put on board both the multiple pi and the co-investigators i am eternally grateful to you for, for your efforts and i thank you uh, for putting together your brains because a lot of people not only at mbarara but within africa are going to benefit uh, from the work that you are going to carry out during this time all the institutions that have and individuals who provided us with letters of support we are grateful to you all because it is those letters of support that made it possible for us uh, to get uh, this funding of course i cannot go without thanking the national institute of health and the fogarty uh, uh, international uh, center for granting us this award ladies and gentlemen i think the rest of the details of the grant will be provided when dr wakida presents the overview uh, of of the grant thank you very much and you are welcome to this launch um politics so uh we uh, the chancellor had agreed to come uh for this launch but he's also the chair of the board of uh, the uganda cancer institute and i think something has cropped up and he has been asked to attend that meeting today so it was not possible for him to fly we haven't yet provided him with a helicopter uh to finish that meeting and then fly and come here in the afternoon even if he attempted, he would have reached here very late. But um, we, we thank uh, him for having accepted to come. But uh, we have found somebody who will graciously uh, close, uh, give closing remarks for this, for this meeting. Uh, um, I deputize the chancellor, but I also have somebody who deputizes me who is going to give closing remarks on behalf of the chancellor. Professor Nixon Kamakama will do that when that time comes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we also put our hands together to thank the team that won the grant that as we were down in the lockdown, they'd refuse to go down to the lockdown. Thanks for making use of the lockdown positively. We've benefited from that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do uh, recognize and welcome the Deputy Vice Chancellor, FNA. Please sit with the gentleman. Take up your seat. I usher you in. Water will always find its level. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for accepting to take up that seat. And uh, uh, Professor Gender Balance, uh, next time. Uh, just in case you need a female Deputy Vice Chancellor. Um, they're talking about a female Vice Chancellor. So, um, May the powers entrusted to me as the MC, I do welcome the future Vice Chancellor to be a female. And those who understood it clapped for me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, online we're going to receive uh, remarks from uh, Dr. Jessica. Uh, Dr. Jessica, you've been with us for quite some time, physically and uh, emotionally and everywhere. It would be unfair if uh, by the time Edith speaks here, she does not give you a Uganda name. That is the task I'm giving her ahead, that by the time you present here, you're getting Dr. Jessica a Uganda name. With us here, um, people online, we do welcome you, but allow me to recognize the people here physically. We do have uh, the ophthalmology department. Please rise up for recognition. Ophthalmology headed by uh, Professor Twinamasko. Uh, thank you. The residents, please stand up. Uh, feel confident about what you're doing. Our eyes look good. Yes, uh, that's the ophthalmology department. Uh, thank you for balancing the gender there. Because one professor is equal to two gentlemen and the ladies are three. So, Professor and Simon online, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Ngonzi, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, but here representing the obstetrics and gynecology and all obstetricians in the house please rise 
please rise. The obstetricians, yes. Those are the people who, yes, you're putting on the masks. Stay standing. We can see you. Cameras, please zoom closer. Yes, uh, please stand up, OBGY. Yes, Dr. Musa, the famous one. We usually, <laughs> the owner of uh, treating us. Let me not spoil it. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you're going to shine, and we believe Professor these people did a great job in Lira and in Nakaseke. Don't think uh, Dr. Musa is smiling. He, he got chicken, and he's been eating chicken since he came from Lira. So uh, as you're a hero to the ladies, to us, you are our star. OBGY, please keep the women shining, as uh, the opticians also keep our eyes open to see the women. Uh, so we have the, the administration of uh, Grant's office. Please rise up for recognition. Grant's office. Yes, anyone who is lacking some dollars, those are the people. You know the masks spoiled everything. And uh, the Grant's people are seated with a procurement officer. Are we safe? <laughs> yes. As we shall continue to uh, recognize uh, yes, Dr. Edith will welcome her people. I'll not antagonize that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite online uh, Dr. Jessica, who is going to present to us. Dr. Jessica, are you ready for us? Yes, I can hear you okay. Can we hear her? Yes, we're good. Um, I recognize the venue where you are, and I really wish I could be there. Um, hopefully this pandemic will allow us to, to be more um, physically together in the future. Um, but even with this virtual um, meeting today, it's just so exciting to, to talk about this project um, and to recognize all the hard work that went into it. Um, as Professor Abua mentioned, this was truly a team effort. Um, and could not have happened. Um, the application was really, really, can you hear me okay? I'm getting some feedback. Is it okay? All right, so this could not have happened um, without so many people rolling up their sleeves and bringing their expertise from so many different angles. Um, and I think that's really one of the, the major strengths of our, our uh, initiative here and the ability to bring together so many people um, and to make a difference in uh, data, data science and how it's implemented to improve health. Um, so as, as you've already heard, this initiative um, is a, a major um, priority for the NIH. And as Professor Obua mentioned, it's, it's supported by the Fogarty International Center, which is, is really dedicated to improving health around the globe. But it also represents a major um, initiative within uh, many aspects of NIH, um, not just Fogarty. Um, so I think we should be very proud uh, to be recognized um, you know, for our application and our, our talents and, and what we're going to be bringing for data science. Um, and I think we're really uh, in a great position um, to promote uh, this type of research um, in, in and, and around uh, other parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and coming from Boston, it's a real privilege to be able to uh, continue um, my engagement with, with MUST and other partners. Um, and I'm happy to represent the implementation science um, pieces of this, uh, of this project. And we'll hear about a number of ways in which implementation science will factor into the overall project. Um, from, from my perspective, I really see it in, in two different angles. One is to really understand what implementation science is and how um, we can uh, support uh, training in implementation science among the investigators. Uh, implementation science is a relatively new field. It's something that we've all been doing in some way or another if, we, if we're working in, in medicine or public health. Um, but I think what we've recognized over the years is how challenging it is to get um, academic uh, products into actual use. And so much of the promise um, and uh, you know, improvement that, that could happen just simply doesn't because it never makes it to the finish line. 
And I, I know from speaking with the NIH about our application, um, our emphasis on getting to that finish line and making sure the products of our, our academic inquiry actually change the way medicine is practiced. Um, I think that was one of the, the highlights that really helped us uh, win this award. Um, so I appreciate everyone's vision and, and thinking uh, ahead and not just um, sticking with the science, which is absolutely important. And I'm, I'm really excited to hear more about the presentations this morning. But I think that additional piece of focus on implementation um, really is a, a major strength of our application and something that the NIH um, is very excited about. Um, so in addition to um, providing training um, for the investigators involved in the pro program, we'll also be weaving it into every project. And you'll hear about that today with our initial projects in ophthalmology and cervical cancer. Um, but we will be uh, bringing on numerous other projects over the years um, with our, our current partners and hopefully with new partners. And implementation science will be a core component of each of those projects. So I will serve as a resource you know, and in my role as one of the uh, multiple PIs on this project, I will be a resource to help identify those training opportunities, um, including some virtually um, through the Harvard Catalyst, which is a, a really amazing resource um, for, for education. Um, some of those may end up hopefully being in person, um, but they certainly can happen uh, virtually. Um, and I will coordinate that. Um, so more to come as we get into that, that stage of the, uh, the overall project. Um, and I'm also going to make other resources available through Mass General Hospital. Um, we have a, an institute called the Mongan Institute, which is a collection of investigators who are focused on population science and, and implementation science is a big piece of that. So I'm hoping to bring other resources to this project um, where we can learn from other scientists who've really spent a lot of time in this area. Um, and I'm excited to, to make those connections for everybody involved. Um, and then as we get into each of the, the individual projects, um, I'm definitely going to be available as a, a resource for study design, for analysis, um, manuscript writing, and at the end of the day, the most important piece, which is actually thinking about how, how this uh, science can make it into public practice. Um, so there's a ton of work to be done. This is an enormous undertaking. Um, I'm, I'm a little daunted, but I'm also excited. And I, I always come back to the, uh, the saying, succeed, we must. Um, and I know we will. And I'm just absolutely thrilled and honored to be able to, to do this work with you. So with that, I will conclude. Um, and thank you so much again for having me um, uh, today and involved in this project. And um, I'll turn it back to the MC, or I don't know if uh, Dr. Chelly, if you'd like to go ahead. I'm happy to take over. Um, I'm also calling from Boston and very thrilled to be here on behalf of our group, the Laboratory for Computational Physiology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I would like to congratulate Embarara University of Science and Technology on this momentous moment. Uh, we are lucky to be a part of this project, and we look forward to learning from each and every one who will be involved in this international initiative. Our mission and vision is to put data and learning at the front and center of healthcare, and we are excited to engage our friends and colleagues in Embarara in this journey. Our group at MIT has actually been working as well with MUST for almost a decade now, and we are thrilled to start the next chapter of our collaboration. In this project, we introduce a new method of teaching, which we refer to as village mentoring and hive learning. Uh, we have created an interconnected meshwork of experts across countries that has developed into a web of individuals whose goal is to learn together and from each other. Um, why do we need a new method of teaching? Well, the problems that we are trying to address, health disparities around the world, a medical knowledge system that disproportionately represents a majority's view are the same problems we have faced in the previous century. And we cannot solve those problems with the same mindset that created them in the first place. Uh, we need to break down the silos across disciplines and across continents and leverage each other's expertise, experiences, and perspectives. Um, once again, congratulations to everyone, and I look forward to learning from you all.
Our next presenter is Dr. Edith to give us an overview of Mbara University Data Science Research Hub. Dr. Edith, she's rushing before I finish her, her introduction. Please take it slow. Um, oh, please. Can I finish? Uh, okay, I'll introduce you after. Uh, Dr. Edith Wakida recently graduated uh, in a field uh, cross-cutting. So what we want to encourage is uh, trying to have cross-cutting researchers. If so, a social scientist can go to the faculty of medicine, is it a deal? It's a deal. What does it help? It gives you a cross-cutting mind. And Dr. Edith, you've inspired many to get into this field. And Aluta Continua, we are ready to listen to you. Sanitizer, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela. Good afternoon to you all. Angela didn't complete her introduction. She did not introduce the people that I came with. Oh. Can you hear me? Thank you. So I was saying that Angela didn't complete introducing uh, the people that I came with, uh, I work or we work with a team of um, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly stand up, the ones from the research office. Please take your seat. Thank you very much. Uh, we are all here to listen to. Mad, Mad Sre, Bara University Data Science Research Hub, the PI talked about about it. I think it's not moving. It's on. It's not moving. The slides are not moving. Okay, um, the upcoming or the, the program has been well introduced by Professor Celestine Oboa, so I do not have to talk much about, um, about the objectives of the grant. I will go straight to, uh, this is a, a project he mentioned that uh, is involving a number of institutions and um, Angela talked about the institutions, and um, we have two initial research projects. We shall be listening to more about them. But the first one is looking at the op optimized posterior fundus imaging to diagnose posterior segment eye disease. Um, the team is right here. And I think one of, of, of the things which are, we are very interested in is the diabetes retinopathy. Um, I think Simon Arunga will talk more about it. And Joseph will tell us about the my mobile phone based images for cervical cancer screening. We are working with partnerships and we have the College of Ophthalmologists for Eastern, Central and Southern Africa, abbreviated as COEXA, it's in best, best in Kenya. And we are also working with Kwame Nkrumah uh, University of Science and Techno Technology. So Kwame Nkrumah is partnering with jo Joseph Ngonzi on the obstetrics uh, project, and we shall have COEXA working with Dr. Arunga. We have international partners. Ghana is one of them. Kenya is one of them. We have MIT, and we have MGH. MGH is backing us up in implementation science skills. Jessica has ably talked about that. And MIT with data science skills, uh, Dr. Leo has also talked about that. Each project is going to work with local ministries of health, community-based organizations, and technology partners 
to advance the mission of harnessing medical images for improved clinical outcomes and impact. And the research projects are going to be supported by two cores. Uh, we have the Data Analysis and Management Core, which is headed by Dr. Fred Kagwa. He is going to give us a little more detail about uh, the kind of support that he will be giving to the two projects. And then we have the Administrative Core, which I am going to lead. Now, uh, as the Administrative Core, we are going to provide um, or support training for all necessary data science and implementation science skill sets with clear mechanisms for sharing best practices among initial and future projects. We are going to have, we have projected for future growth. So other than the two projects that we have started with, uh, we project to add on a few more projects as we move along. And together, these efforts are going to produce a data science center of excellence uh, that will create a multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary ecosystem that can begin to provide local solutions to critical health problems. And these are African problems that we are addressing, not um, anything other than Africa. Uh, the data, I mean, the administrative core is going to be responsible for uh, the oversight of the hub components. Now, the hub components include the, the data core, they include the research, and also the pilot projects, which I talked about uh, future growth. And this is to foster synergy and integration. Now, this is the organizational structure of the research hub that we are setting up at MAST. And um, it's headed by, we are using a multiple PD arrangement where we have the three uh, principal investigators. Professor Bua is the contact PD and he's the one directly in, charge, um, in touch with the NIH. He's the research hub director. We are working with Dr. Sely uh, from MIT who is in charge of uh, data science and then Dr. Hebara who is uh, from MGH in charge of uh, implementation science. Now below them is the research hub deputy director. Now, this deputy director is going to work with a number of people and is going to report to the multiple PDs. So the deputy director is going to work with um, the data management and analysis core, is going to work with co-investigators, that is in the two research projects we are beginning with in the first year, and then we shall have additional uh, pilot projects uh, from the second year going forward. And uh, the co-investigator for ophthalmology is Dr. Simon Arunga. And the co-investigator for the GAIN project is Dr. Joseph Ngonzi. They have counterparts. Uh, Dr. Joseph Ngonzi's counterpart at Kenast is Dr. Tom Kone. And the counterpart for Dr. Simon Arunga is Dr. Michael Gichangi from Kenya. Um, Dr. Kelly is going to support Dr. Fred Kagwa, but in Fred Kagwa's presentation, he's also going to have a team that he's going to work with. Uh, this is kind of a complex uh, program that we are having, but we shall be able to understand it. Now, we are going to have four project coordinators who are going to support, who are going to support these um, four different boxes that I am presenting here. We have two project coordinators at MAST. At MAST, we are going to begin with one, and then in the second year, when we get uh, additional pilot projects, then we shall have the second project coordinator. We have a project coordinator at COEXA and a project coordinator at KNAST. Now, these project coordinators are going, to, are going to be working very closely with the hub administrator. So, the project coordinators will work with the hub administrator and the co-PIs, I mean the co-investigators. And then um, the hub administrator will give us the report and I will give the report to the, um, the, the multiple PDs. That's how uh, this, um, the hub is going to work. Now the, the admin core has three objectives. The first one is to support uh, administration and management of the entire hub. 
The second uh, pro, uh, uh, specific aim is um, on the pilot projects and future growth. And the last one is research and career development. Sorry, there's a fourth one, which is an evaluation component. So under the administration, um, it has already been uh, said, I don't have to repeat that. We are using the multiple PD plan. We have the deputy hub director and we have the co-investigators. Now, we, in the leadership structure, we have two layers. We have the program implementation committee where um, all the implementation of the different projects across the different sites are going to be monitored and um, any challenges are going to be addressed at that point. Uh, the program implementation committee is also going to monitor the future, uh, future pilot projects to ensure that they are on track. Uh, we have different sites where we shall be implementing and it's not very easy to bring, to bring together everyone to do what they're supposed to do in a timely manner and yet every project is time bound. So there's going to be high level coordination that's going to be happening here. We are also going to have the scientific advisory board. Uh, this is going to be above, you know, like, well, adv advisory like, like um, the word and it's going to be comprised of um, experts in data science, implementation science, and other relevant uh, specified areas. We just talked about future growth. So we shall be bringing on board uh, experts uh, based on, on, the additional, on the additional projects that we are bringing. And once the scientific advisory board projects and future growth. We are planning to select and support evaluation of data science related uh, projects. Now, whatever we are doing, we are in the
and these future projects are going to run for uh, to run for two years. So in the second year, we are going to offer three pilot projects, the second and the third year, and then in the fourth year, we shall have we shall open up for four more. So we know everyone or the departments that deal with images, we shall be looking out for you. And then, um, so the opportunity to apply is going to be open, not just to MAST, but to KNAST and to COEXA. So this is going to be open, advertised, and um, the selection is really going to be on merit. So whoever is listening to us and you belong to this field, yes, we shall be opening up in the second year and we shall look or be excited or ready to receive your applications. Now, this program is going to enable the initial research projects to grow new areas. So the two initial projects that we have can decide to come up with new areas that are outside of what they are presenting now. So they'll also have that opportunity to expand. Now, in the third aim, we are looking at research and career enhancement. And here we are going to proactively link the scientists in the hub. That's the students. We are going to have students, postdoctoral fellows. Um, we are going to link them uh, to training opportunities to increase their capacity to carry out data science and innovation in Africa. And we are going to work with the Data Science uh, Africa Coordinating Center to connect with other institutions that are supported by the DSI Initiative Africa. Uh, to facilitate applications from our investigators. Uh, we are also going to encourage mentorship and engage engagement of trainees within the funded research projects in the DSI initiative or in the consortium. So we shall try to link whoever is involved in our, our Ugandan data hub um, to the data DSI Africa consortium and also facilitate career enhancement through organization of data science and implementation science online courses, regional summits, uh, but the regional summits are going to be in year three and five, and then career development activities. So this, um, we shall mainly focus on manuscript writing and presentation skills. And then aim for is evaluation of the hub activities. And in here, yes, we are going to have the overall work plan with key indicators uh, for program activity reporting, schedule joint meetings, and then develop standard operating procedures to guide the hub operations, including communication plans. We have people from different places. We have OBGY, they have their own mode of working. We have ophthalmology with their own mode of working. We have uh, computing, but then we need to find um, a common or a meeting place. So yes, we shall have the central one, but then we shall need, no, we shall first need the, the outer working plans, and then we shall come up with a central one and harmonize on what we shall be reporting as our progress. So this coordination is going to help ensure productivity and efficient integration of the diverse components that are involved in the hub. And then we intend to host uh, monthly meetings at the admin core, and at project level, just to make sure that everything is going on as planned. Since um, the admin core is the one reporting to the funder, we must make sure that uh, the other components are fulfilling their aim, and then they are contributing to the report that is going to the funder. So in the monthly meetings, we shall be receiving performance updates, and then we generate solutions to any possible problems. And then halfway or yeah, halfway the year, halfway, we shall be reporting to the scientific advisory board. Yeah, so looking at think. evaluation of our and our milestones, the progress of research and pilot projects. So all co-investigators are going to submit to the contact. PI monthly updates with formal quarterly progress reports. They are also, uh, we're also going to have the progress will be presented to the peak. So once uh, the reports are given to the PI, then we shall have these reports or the progress reported to the peak 
and subsequently to the Scientific Advisory Committee. And then each year, the hub deputy director is going to formally meet with each co-investigator, either virtually or in person, to review progress, implementation challenges, and productivity. This is really just to make sure that everything is going as planned, and if there are any administrative issues, they are handled before um, anything goes out of hand. And then the hub deputy director is also going to speak individually with the implementation officers when specific administrative uh, problems with ins at institutional level come up, especially uh, on, the, on the projects. And then um, for the long-term success of this hub, we shall be measuring the successful completion of the stated research aims. We have the aims in the projects. We have the aims per core. So we shall be measuring our long-term success by the completion of the activities that we have set out to do, onboarding of new uh, or pilot projects, conference participation and publications, and then future grant applications. I have not gone into unpacking what's all about the data core or what's all about Modria or Avemap. Um, the respective people are going to tell us more. And so I am going to invite Dr. Fred Kagwa to come and take us through uh, data analysis and management core activities. And then we shall have the Modria group and the Avemap group. Then we can open up for questions. I think if I open up for questions now, um, I may not be able to answer. Perhaps we can pick them. We can pick the, we can pick, get the answers from the subsequent presentations. So Fred, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you. Good afternoon and uh, good morning to those in the US. I'm Fred Kagwa and I'll take you through the data management and analysis core. Um, this is the team at MAST, the writing team at MAST, uh, myself, Rogers and uh, Amos. Of course, we shall work with others. Uh, Leo didn't mention the team at MIT. At MIT, we have C. Cheng, Leo, and uh, I think Tom. Yeah, uh, it's a great team, and uh, it's been nice really working with them. Well, I started with Drip, and uh, well, when we talk about Drip, we are talking about data rich and information poor. Uh, this this term. Uh, was used in the 1983. It was first used in 1983, meaning that organizations had a lot of data, but it was difficult for them to make use out of this data. I have a question for us here, uh, mostly those in Africa and those who have traversed Africa. If you look at the current technology trends, where do you see Africa and where do you see Uganda in terms of data usage and data management? So us as a uh, madshre, we want to move beyond drip. Uh, we don't want to be data rich but information poor, but we want to take very good use of this. Data science is uh, a new trending uh, area that is really bringing miracles, I would say, in terms of research that requires utilization of existing data. And particularly, if you look at the health sector, 
data science has really brought on board uh, very good promises. However, the challenge is, one, we have limited data and the existing data that is there, also the types that are available are limited. And this is constraining the possibilities or the potentials that data science has. However, we have artificial intelligence methodologies which uh, professors talked about, for example, machine learning and uh, deep learning and others which have been known to actually unlock any challenges within uh, data related uh, fields. And these can help us uh, retrieve or find out any insights that may be unknown. But this is only possible if we have sufficient data. If this is possible if we have sufficient data uh, available. And why are we looking at artificial intelligence uh, in Uganda? It is uh, not so much uh, old. It is quite new. I think Makerere has a lab and uh, Sitema University. And uh, now we have a research hub here that we want to look at. Uh, AI is really moving faster and bringing things faster in terms of disease diagnosis that uh, Professor Bo has already talked about. And uh, it is, of course, also supporting expert knowledge to people uh, who are in remote areas or what we call the resource, limited resource settings. So our focus as uh, Madshire is uh, looking at clinical images uh, with the data that is uh, attached to it. Where are we looking at clinical images? Professor has already told us. These are very, very informative. They give us a lot of uh, information. And of course, uh, most of the diagnosis, uh, they focus on what they see. Yeah. However, uh, when you look at the current image databases, they are quite insufficient. It's the reason we are trying to come up with uh, an archive of uh, better images. The existing ones are lacking information from key populations. If you look at the tools, for example, that are being used in the ophthalmology department, the OCT and others, these have mainly been trained or calibrated on European data. And most of them have not been uh, calibrated on African data. Professor Tunomasko, that one is a, a very important point for you. So uh, this is one of the issues that is bringing us to the point of collecting data that is African-based. Connection to other clinical data is also a missing component with existing uh, image databases, and we surely want to overcome some of those challenges. So, however, if we are to have automated uh, kind of artificial intelligence-based tools, which are going to give us meaningful outcomes in terms of clinical uh, clinicals, then we will need large data sets because artificial intelligence tools require a lot of data to make, uh, to learn, and then be able to give uh, better directions. Linking up with the data is something that we also uh, need to put in, uh, in, in place or in action. And of course, also training, which has already been uh, talked about. So as the data management and analysis core, we want to overcome all of those limitations by setting up an open data science platform, which is going to help us archive uh, data, which is going to be used by researchers. And in this archive, of course, uh, in, the, in the platform, we want to make sure that data is systematically captured. Some of the challenges that we have found is that people have been capturing data, yes, but not systematically. So that is one of the cores. Integration, as we saw, missing up in integration, storage, uh, management, and of course, analysis. Uh, Edith has talked about the protection of human subjects. It is a core the data management and analysis uh, core, and making sure that there are policies and guidelines on access to this data. So it is not going to be, yes, it is an open data science platform, but it's not free data. It is at a request for use. And that is very, very uh, critical. 
We have three specific aims that uh, we are focusing on and most importantly is having the archive available for healthcare data uh, science research and this will traverse from ophthalmology, cervical cancer, dermatology and ETC as Edith has mentioned them. We are starting with ophthalmology and uh, cervical cancer. And then too, we want to make sure that clinicians have access to this data and they can make informed decisions uh, in their diagnosis and their practice. We have a lot of data, but it is uh, quite uh, not so used as expected. And of course, like I've already said, there must be quality control and quality assurance, uh, which is very, very critical concerning people's health data. So how are we achieving this uh, in terms of our strategy? So we want to have an open uh, archive, but of course with uh, restrictions in terms of access. You make a request, you get access to the data, and uh, you can utilize it for research. So there will be uniform access and to this multiple disease database. We've said there are many diseases. It will be multi-centered from uh, Mbarara here, People in Africa and people uh, beyond Africa will be able to access this for health data science research. This data will be de-identified to remove any indicators that could try to link the data to patients. Very, very critical. And uh, of course, integration, people will be able to uh, test the applications on the platform that we shall set up and then uh, come up with results. Data mining and processing and of course visualizing all uh, output from what will have uh, been achieved. So that is on uh, aim one. On aim two, we want to look at uh, African clinicians, bring them together, uh, data engineers and any other data scientists so that we are able to pick knowledge from them and see how do they translate questions that are specific to particular patients into models that are AI based. And that one will actually help us have well calibrated uh, tools or artificial intelligence that is machine learning and deep learning. And their experience, of course, will be very, very important for us in the evaluation. The accuracy of these algorithms uh, will be very, very so much based on the tools themselves and also trying to see the clinicians themselves. What is the comparison when the tool gives results? Is it what the clinician also is uh, providing as a result? And of course, as we've already heard that uh, we will have collaboration with partners uh, amongst African countries. It is not only here in Barara, but we are going to link up with many other African countries. In the start, we have Ghana and uh, Kenya. So on the last aim, we are looking at quality. Uh, and of course, this is a very, very uh, critical aspect that the NIH uh, looks at in terms of how is the data going to be governed? Uh, how do people access the data? Uh, the FAIR principles, have they been or will they be uh, achieved? Uh, FAIR principles, FAIR is uh, data must be find, uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. These are very, very critical things. So if at all we have the data but is not findable, people cannot access it, and people cannot reuse it, then we don't have a research hub. So that is very, very critical for us. Uh, in a nutshell, this is uh, a diagrammatic, just uh, simple, of what it is very technical. I don't want to go to the technical parts of it, but uh, we have the Open Data Science Platform providing all these services in the ICTs, artificial intelligence, artificial neural networks, the analytics, machine learning, and, and, and this platform, of course, like we've said, will avail uh, processes for researchers to try out the algorithms and uh, get results. And those results, they can always see them through visualization. Uh, the governance and trust is where we have checks and balances. Who is going to access the data and 
which uh, rules have we put in place? Is it is the data of quality uh, and of course the storage uh, capacity that is for the servers that we will uh, purchase? And of course, making sure that the security is, is tight. Curation and management and then the processing. Uh, all of these are going to sit on a certain hardware that will be at Mbora University and all the data sources will be inputting data in here and researchers will be accessing this from site that will provide for them to make a request for data and etc. Then the data scientists will have applications also going through a certain platform to try and test their work if it is uh, to the point. So what do we expect? Of course, we're expecting that uh, this is, is going to work out and surely it will work out to uh, help achieve decision analysis. Uh, medics uh, know that word. It, it challenges me in, in pronunciation. Uh, I think Professor Boy can pronounce it for me. Prognostication. Yeah? Is medics uh, can try to explain that. And of course this is to help us make informed recommendations on individual treatments for different patients. Predictive modeling is going to help us to optimize resources because we are in a low resource setting and therefore we are looking for all those critical uh, measures that can help us reach far with a lot. And of course the implementation science which has been talked about. This is critical. A lot of research has been done and it remains in the shelves, in the publications, but it is not taken up. So we want to make sure that all these efforts will lead to the uptake of the findings that will come out through uh, all that will be done through this hub uh, so that we improve quality and uh, effectiveness in the healthcare services of Ugandans and Africans at large. And of course these are critical uh, aspects for the Data Science Africa Initiative. I thank you. I want to call upon uh, Joseph to take us through. Uh, Simon? Yes, okay. Simon, you're online. Are you hearing us? Okay. Yes. It is fine, but it uh, looks like just... Uh, yes, Fred, I am here. I was just uh, thinking that uh, Joseph wanted to go first, but I'm happy to present uh, if you want me to now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Fred? All right, shall I share my screen? Or Edith, would you like to share the slides from your end? Edith or Fred, can you hear me over there? <laughs>
head of the ophthalmic division. And then I have um, uh, Dr. Teddy Kwaga on our team and Mr. Josiah Onyango from COEXA. I'm privileged to talk about a multimodal database of retinal images uh, in Africa. What you can see here is a technician taking a picture of the back of the eye of one of the patients in our outreach. Imaging of the back of the eye, or what we call retina, can help us eye specialists diagnose most blinding posterior segment eye diseases, or what we call PSED. Now, this is very useful because we can catch things like diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma and age-related macular degeneration. For this technology to happen well, one, an image has to be taken by a technician, and that image then must be read by a specialist who then makes a diagnosis. The challenge for Africa is that these specialists are not there, or there are very few on ground. This is where artificial intelligence comes in. If there was a way of this technician, the frontline technician taking the image, if there was a way for such a person to access an intelligent mechanism, which can guide them to know that this is a diseased retina and this is a normal retina. Has this moved now? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. So he will talk as he's chatting with you. You good? He, yes, he sends a message on this. Fantastic, thank you very much. Yeah, he has seen them. So uh, allow me to proceed. So as I was saying, for, for this technology to work well, the, the image has to be taken and the, the specialist has to see the image and interpret. So if we had an artificial intelligence system, which can allow the technician who is out there in the field taking the pictures, 
if they can take and this system tells them real time what to advise the patient that would be very useful and a way of covering the gaps of human health for eye, eye care that we have now this system is not uh, is not uh, theoretical it's already it already exists and has worked well in places like the us and europe and uh, india next slide please when it comes to Africa, there are key gaps for this technology to be implemented. First of all, is that we don't have an available African image database or retinas, which means that even if we want to develop this technology, we have no reference databases that we can train uh, the deep learning algorithms on. Secondly, the AI that has been developed like Google AI and others, were developed and validated using images which were not African. So mostly white and Caucasian and Indian, which means when that technology comes to Africa, they cannot perform optimally. But interestingly, like we say, diseases don't read books. So the models that we have out there, you have a model for diabetic retinopathy alone, a model for glaucoma alone, but it's very possible that someone can have two diseases. They can have glaucoma, they have diabetic retinopathy. A man can have as many diseases as they want. So we don't have existing models which can diagnose this at a comprehensive level. A few images we have in Africa don't have associated metadata, what we call other medical record that we can use as a researchable database. Next slide, please. And this is where we come in with our innovation. Our innovation seeks to create the first publicly accessible retinal imaging database with associated metadata, but based on the African population. Once we have this in place, then we will develop, test, and validate posterior segment screening algorithms that are custom tailored to the African population. Once that is in place, then through implementation research methodologies, we can actually test. It's one thing to take a man to the river and another for that man or a horse to drink. So you can have the algorithm, but actually testing it out in the real world is critical. Next slide, please. So over the next five years that our project will be funded, we, want, we have a couple of aims. Aim one is to develop this database. And we hope to achieve this milestone by the end of the year one of this project. We have two strategies in place. First, we have been over the last four years collecting retinal images through our diabetic retinopathy screening program. So these images will be a starting point, but also prospectively, we shall collect new images in a systematic way with associated metadata. And we are going to do it in Uganda at Imbari University and also with our partners at Kenyatta Hospital in Kenya. At the end of year one, we hope to have a well curated and labeled data set that will be ready for the data scientists to start playing with as we develop this algorithm. And over the next five years, we hope to onboard other African sites so that we build a very large data set that is comprehensive for Africa. Aim two is that once this data base is in place, then we can start to trigger the development of specific algorithms, like for diabetic retinopathy in year two, glaucoma and age-related macular degeneration in year three, and ultimately take the lessons learned from those models and try to do an ambitious project, which will combine all the three into one comprehensive algorithm for posterior segment eye disease. After these, these algorithms have been developed. We will test them out in the real world using implementation research. And in our group, we have people who are well grounded, like a PI uh, Jessica Habera, who is an implementation researcher and uh, who will provide guidance to us in 
testing the algorithms that we have developed. We have uh, the hospitals we are working with as must having a good footprint in the community. We will test these at district hospitals to see the lessons that we can learn on how we can adapt this to our African uh, setting. Next slide. So our team is composed of uh, a, a group of scientists from Uganda, from Kenya and USA. Uh, in Uganda, I'm the co-investigator responsible for the project uh, with a key person, Dr. Teddy Kwaga. In Kenya, I have my colleague, Dr. Michael Gishangi, who is here with me in the room and the head of the Kenyan Division of Thermic Services with Dr. Nyawira Mwangi as a key person. And in the USA, we have um, Dr. Catherine and Dr. Michael Molly, uh, who will provide good guidance, as well as uh, Dr. Ashley Cross, who is helping us with the image labeling and curation of the database. I'm happy to take any questions that might follow. Thank you for listening to me. In detail, okay. Uh, yeah, there was some bit of muting there. I'll say it again that this is the second project and uh, uh, Matt's Ray, and it's the heavy map project in full the automated visual evaluation and your spatial map for cervical cancer screening optimization in sub-Saharan Africa. Joseph Ngozi um, is my name, and uh, we've got a big team under this particular project. Um, in Uganda, we have uh, uh, the gynecologists, myself, Dr. Kayondo, and Dr. Joy Mhumza, who is a gyne-oncology fellow uh, at Mulago. Uh, we have also got the lead uh, for the cervical cancer screening clinic uh, in terms of nursing care, who is uh, Sister Alexa Namuli. And we've been uh, working closely with the Brenda Inomich, who is the youngest obstetrician on board. Uh, we have a team from Ghana, the online, uh, Dr. Thomas um, Coney, uh, Amo Antwi, and the uh, uh, and also a team in the U.S., uh, Thomas Rando, Adeline Boatin, and a number of partners. In particular, okay, someone controlling the slides, please, let's, okay, thank you. Okay, so the presentation outline is as presented. In terms of background information, cervical cancer is preventable, and it is indeed curable if detected early and treated. Human papilloma virus is the 
obligate viral cause of cervical dysplasia and cancer. Without significant control of cervical cancer disease, by the year 2030, there is a projected rise of, uh, of about 700,000 new cases and uh, almost half a million annual deaths. In, in 2020, the World Health Organization launched um, a campaign to eliminate cervical cancer as a public health burden. And these three targets you know, came forth. One, there was a target uh, of 90% vaccination against uh, HPV. 70% of women screened with a high performance screening test and 90% of women with cervical disease treated. Cervical disease including both pre-malignant lesions and also invasive disease. Achieving these goals that WHO set out to uh, as a target, as a campaign, could avert about 7 million cases of cervical cancer and 62 million deaths by the year 2020. 2120. And this could add about 27.3 billion US dollars to the world's economy from both direct and indirect effects. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological cancer among women in Ghana and Uganda. Uh, in terms of uh, summary statistics, um, Uganda and Ghana are a little bit comparable. Uh, according to those parameters that we picked out. Women at risk for cervical cancer in Uganda, they're about 11 million. In Ghana, uh, 9 million. The incidence uh, in Ghana is 39 compared to 40. For in Uganda, the mortality is 23 in, in Ghana, 27 in Uganda. That's per 100,000. And then the other parameters follow as highlighted. Screening, secondary prevention through screening is uh, very limited in sub-Saharan Africa, where Uganda is. Early stage cervical cancer can be cured with effective and safe surgical procedures. However, less than 50% of sub-Saharan African countries have, have a national cervical cancer screening program. And this is way below the rate in the resource-rich uh, countries. Cervical cancer screening in our setting is limited by opportunistic screening models and yet we know that these models have been successful where there is access to facilities uh, that, are, that are capable of screening. There's high access to such facilities. The health literacy is uh, uh, sufficient and health information systems are robust. WHO guidelines recommend uh, HPV testing or visual inspection using acetic acid. VIA is uh, a low cost, we know a low cost uh, methodology or screening uh, method. It requires a pelvic uh, exam application of acetic acid, which is uh, commonly known as vinegar, um, and inspection of the cervix for a characteristic. Uh, whitening, acetal whitening, which would indicate cervical uh, dysplasia. Of course, this, res this result enables immediate uh, treatment, which uh, in our language of gynecology or gyn-onc is uh, referred to as uh, screen and treat. VIA has got very critical limitations, and we just highlighted a few here. It's labor intensive, uh, finds only the lesions that are visible to the operator, has high subjectivity and poor into observer reliability, and it requires practitioner training. So these are very critical limitations uh, to this method that is being practiced in much of sub-Saharan Africa. Despite these proven approaches, which synergize, you know, which um, synergize each other, there is a limitation in terms of implementation and systematic and data-driven analysis of access 
to cervical cancer screening is also very limited across sub-Saharan Africa. As African countries discuss and they take plans, you know, make plans of uh, uh, scaling up screening modalities, and also take on the mandate of eliminating cervical cancer and develop national prevention programs, strategies will definitely be needed to organize data for dynamic and strategic health system strengthening. Under AVMAP or AVEMAP, depending on which school some of us went to, we came up with an innovation. And uh, this innovation is premised on the fact that automated image-based diagnostics for cervical cancer screening offer potential in scaling up cervical cancer screening. As visual inspection uh, uh, using acetic acid relies on visualization, digital image capture of the cervix using uh, mobile phone technology can overcome some of these limitations of VIA through remote supervision uh, and diagnosis. So one strategy to overcome the subjectivity and training um, needed for VIA is to utilize uh, machine learning. Um, Dr. Kagwa spoke a little bit about it. And this machine learning will hopefully be able to identify abnormalities in cervical images. With such algorithms, artificial intelligence, facilitated image recognition, um, might be able to create something that is objective in terms of uh, a point of care screening. Even with low cost, easy to use uh, screening methods, um, there is needed additional work to be able to optimize access to screening. A novel, a, a novel area you know, to, to help in this particular uh, regard is what we call geospatial analysis to understand um, cervical cancer access and also the referral pathways. So built on geographical information systems, this particular analysis offers data-driven visual analytics to be able to inform uh, efforts to improve access to the screening and scale up the screening processes. Under this geospatial analysis, there are metrics such as time to, tra time to travel to access facilities that are capable of screening uh, that can be able to help uh, optimal locations for the new cervical cancer facilities or new sites for screening to achieve um, a great impact. There is a smartphone, there's a, a colposcope which is smartphone based, we call the EVA. And this particular device has got a high quality, of op high quality optic and the uh, integrated touchless medical record system inbuilt. Uh, we've been able to use it um, uh, at our clinic. The device can securely be connected to the internet to upload images and records and can also be used for teleconsultation. It has been approved by recognized approval bodies uh, in different parts of the world. So our overall approach as we uh, get into this particular innovation is that we aim to leverage and develop data science expertise at our sites uh, here in Uganda and also in Ghana to first optimize and then combine the automated visual evaluation based screening by health uh, care workers at the different um, lower facilities with the geospatial analysis and needs driven assessment and this will eventually be able to inform uh, the scale-up program in these two uh, study areas. We've had, like I hinted before, preliminary studies uh, at our clinic in Imbara Regional Referral Hospital. About two years ago, we did establish a pilot project uh, of remote mentorship for VIA using EVA 
for Ubugoye Health Center in Kasese, and we screened close to 400 women. Uh, our experience with the, this whole preliminary involvement uh, demonstrated that healthcare workers in the rural Uganda are able to use the EVA system and also capture diagnostic quality images. Uh, there's adequate cellular signal to upload images from those peripheral facilities and not just images but also records for review uh, where experts uh, can be located like at MAST and MGH. Immediate treatment can safely be performed using ablative uh, therapies and the electronic medical and EMR in the EVA can be leveraged in this setting to assist with consultations. It's possible to upload a cervical image in Kasese and uh, be able to uh, you know, get uh, consultative help, not just at MAST, but also uh, beyond the borders of Uganda. Using the EVS system, we have built a library of cervical images from about 766 women with expert opinion diagnosis documented at Mbara Regional Referral Hospital Cervical Cancer Screening Clinic. Um, there has been about 96% upload rate to the cloud-based portal system. Uh, AVE was able to read 97% of these cervical images and 45% of the images we are read as abnormal, while experienced clinicians read 22% as abnormal. Hence, further investigations and the optimization of this system is critically needed. I'll make a summary of the aims that we uh, have envisaged under this project. Aim one is to validate and expand the use of the automated visual evaluation for cervical cancer screening, and that will happen in the first and second year. Uh, we have two sub-themes under this aim. One, one A is to build a repository of labeled cervical images to support data science research. Um, and our primary, uh, we estimate to recruit about 4,000 women over these two years and using biopsy diagnosis as our gold standard, as it is known in the scientific world, we will test and fine-tune the current AVE algorithm on the images that will be acquired. We will utilize 50% of these images to develop the classifier and the 50% as a validation set. Our primary outcome under this M1A will be the sensitivity and specificity of the classifiers to identify histology uh, confirmed cervical dysplasia. And the secondary outcomes are quite a number as listed here. 1B, we plan to pilot, to pilot test and optimize AVE for use at different levels of the health system. And under this, we will be able to identify in each country, Ghana and Uganda, two district level facilities and three primary care level facilities to pilot test the use of AVE. We'll do training on uh, a number of things, including AVE corpos corposcope, use of uh, some uh, treatment uh, modalities, and also national guidelines that uh, within these countries for screening. We will provide healthcare workers with an initial diagnosis and prompts as to the next steps in clinical management. The cloud-based secure system will be used to enable telementoring between um, Bioregional Referral Hospital, CATH, and peripheral sites. So a, a lot of information will be collected in this regard. Uh, outcomes under 1B uh, will be feasible. Feasibility will be considered successful if 75% or greater of all steps are completed as expected, while usability will be considered successful if we achieve 75% or greater rating the process as moderately or highly acceptable. We have four main deliverables under AIM-1, and uh, these deliverables will constitute the planned manuscripts I'll not go through each one of them, but there are four. M2 
will be to determine access to cervical cancer screening and the referral pathways in Ghana and Uganda. Uh, we'll be able to collect a lot of information and uh, health facility capacity, the national population data and travel data. Uh, with geospatial mapping, we'll be able to use the data collected and the travel distance analysis to determine the target populations that, you know, to access uh, the cervical cancer prevention and treatment care cascade. Under this particular aim, we planned out three deliverables or manuscripts and as titled uh, on this particular slide. Aim three, we plan to use the AVE, automated visual evaluation and geospatial analysis to scale up cervical cancer screening in uh, Uganda and Ghana. Uh, baseline information uh, on assessment will be collected. Uh, we'll also be able to delve into site identification for facility strengthening and the number of activities that we are planning to accomplish under this aim. There are two deliverables that we did plan for under aim three, and that brings the total number of deliverables to nine under FMAP. Thank you for listening. We'll be able to welcome any particular concerns or questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Ngonzi. Um, I'd request my ushers to bring, uh, to create a panel here, bring uh, three, four chairs. It's time for Q&A. My ushers, please. Uh, Dr. Arunga, you're part of this panel here, much as your chair is up there. So now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite uh, Dr. Mwavu Rogers. Oh, Professor Mwavu Rogers. Why is he a professor? The way he's dressed. That's how professors used to dress up those days. Specs, coats, and uh, jackets. And he's going to take us through. We're going to do, um, we'll be taking three, answer three. And um, that's how we shall take it. Uh, Dr. Runga, hi. Sasa, sema kiswaili, onasema kiswaili. Dr. Runga, are you present? I'm trying to get to you. Uh, Say present. E -e, technology. I want him to silent. I didn't hear that question. <laughs> I, am I am present and can hear you very well. On our guests, why? Angel, I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Shall I just use the laptop? Okay. Right. Uh, yes. I can hear you very well, Angela. Yes, and now we're waiting. someone who is logged in. Let's mute our microphones.
Hello. Hello. Uh, can we have someone? It's okay. And uh, is stepping in for Dr. Ngozi and is going to answer all the questions related to of the <laughs> all questions related to OBS and Gain. Uh, the only lady in the people people power colors but uh please let me speak it's, it's my show <laughs> but she she belongs uh, in the mighty part of nrm <laughs> uh dr edith wakida uh, she's our deputy director of the hub and uh, she leads the admin core and she'll be answering questions related to that direction and uh, the gentleman at the extreme right is Dr. Ayara Fred Kagwa. The gentleman that was speaking things to do with AI here. You know AI today, it's uh, the new electricity. Previously things used to move, or things were running using electricity, but now, AI has ever overtaken such things. And uh, AI is the new electricity and everything today, the economy runs with AI 
medicine, AI. So as people in the computing world, we shall never miss what to eat. Yeah, jobs are all over the entire world. All sections are welcoming us. So Dr. Fred will be taking on questions from that field of the AI or is leading the data core team. And I also belong to that team. So we are going to take questions and uh, I'll start with people in this room and uh, I will welcome first three questions. Then the panelists will answer those questions. Uh, then I'll also welcome questions from the, uh, from uh, questions online. Then the panelists will also answer those three questions from the, our audience online. So I'll start with the members in this room. Uh, if you have any question, uh, the PI and the co-PIs spoke to us, told us what this project is all about. So if you have any doubt or you have any question that you want them to answer, this is the right time. And uh, feel free to raise your hand. I'll come pick you up. If you want, you can come over here. Or if you want, I'll come over there and uh, give you the chance to speak. So the floor is open for this session, questions and answers. You just have to raise your hand, then I'll come and pick you up. Thank you. Yeah. So we have uh, Dr. Medal taking the first question. Dr. Medal. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mwavu. And thank you so much, our dear panelists. I'd like, first of all, to thank you, and most especially uh, the PI, Professor Bua, for initiating this wonderful, innovative research that is going to be instrumental for Mbara University of Science and Technology. Let me go straight to my two questions. One is about the data management policy um, that will be guiding this entire process of the research hub. Um, because I understand that for us to effectively protect the integrity of the researchers, the data that we're coming is quite instrumental, and we have to proper data management policy. Um, and data access policy. Number two, I would like you to uh, provide more light on why we focus on repair research, uh, especially without the data. Is there any process for natural science data, social science data? Are you planning expansion or you are only focusing on health data? Because it would be nice as a research hub, if we have a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach to have all forms of data stored uh, for more decision making at institutional, uh, regional, and global levels. I thank you so much. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Professor Bua and his team. I think the project is fantastic and the results will have um, far-reaching consequences. Now, I don't know if this is a question or a suggestion. Um, when Joseph was presenting, he talked about point of care diagnostics and these skills in point of care diagnostics are part of what should come to our training so that if we are able to give skills in point of care diagnostics to say medical students and nursing students they can be magnified so I don't know whether along the way what will be learned from 
these aims will be integrated into our training so that the learners on graduation will already be having this type of skills. I'm just imagining if a medical student uses AI techniques according to Kagwa and deep there in single, he can say this cervix looks suspicious and, 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 and then he's able to take over from there. Or this eye, the retina is about to detach uh, from what I've seen from my smartphone and so there is need for what? For an intervention. So if it's not already there, I really think this is something that we should be looked at. How do we bring these skills to our undergraduate training? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, team. Uh, for bringing this uh, important uh, activity to our university. Uh, my interest is in uh, training of students, and I want to add on to what Professor Malinga said. And my question is, to what extent is this going to involve the deep rural communities? Because these are the people who don't access most of these services, which are actually based in town. And as a university, our strength is in strengthening communities to ensure that they are empowered. So how much of this work is going to be uh, done in those hard-to-reach areas that are normally lacking these services? Thank you. Thank you, the winning team. Uh, mine, this is a project. It has got a start point and an end point. But, and later on, the project is going to be closed. So, why I'm asking this, what I'm going to ask is, what is it that Mbara University of Science and Technology is going to see on top of the project file once that project has been closed? In other words, as an institution, what do we expect to remain once the project ends? Thank you. Okay. I'll let Dr. Fred to answer first. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> members, for those uh, very wonderful questions. I will start from the last question. Uh, we are very blessed that uh, together with the, the professor who has asked, we won another 10-year project, which is actually, uh, we are, we shall, since we are the same team that wrote, we are going to move in synergy with it. And uh, at the end of the five years, we have uh, the university remaining with the servers here at... Uh, the university and this data will be there. The university will continue hosting this data until forever and whoever will come in in whatever years they will always access that data. So that is very very important for us that uh, research will continue because the servers uh, will be still at the university. So that is uh, one and then uh, uh, Dr. Medad talked about the data management policy. Uh, NIH has uh, quite stringent principles of data management, of which we shall leverage. Very uh, most important is the African Data Protection Law, which requires African data not to leave African continent. Uh, on top of that, we have the Ugandan Data and Privacy Law, which was a bill but was signed into law in 2019. Actually, even the, uh, the bill for Africa was signed in 2019. And the one for Uganda also does not allow Ugandan data to live as long as it is health-related data. So uh, we are so much in sync, so we are very safe. Our data will be very well managed. We have talked about de-identification of the data, 
all these are going to be in the management uh, policy of the data, as well as request to use. And there will be penalties, which we already uh, indicated in our write-up, in case of any misuse of this uh, data. And lastly, um, uh, the question which related to part of uh, the data management and analysis core was the integration of the skills of undergraduate students on the computing side as well as the medical side. We have a planned uh, datathon. Yeah, we planned datathon. Is it? Uh, is it? I think. Uh, yeah, I think there is a workshop, something, but there is a datathon at least. I remember in the administrative core. And this brings up uh, students together to sit, think, develop algorithms as we've been having hackathons. Hackathons are quite different from datathons. Datathons is you presented with data and you get solution from the data and you identify uh, some of the problems within that data. So some of those uh, will purely be student-centered, but of course with mentors uh, from uh, not only here Uganda, but also from the U.S. Yeah, that's my submission. I forward to the next. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to try to attempt to answer Dr. Medad. He asked, why only health? Any prospects for others? So for the pilot projects, um, we are going to call on creativity. We are interested in images and algorithm development. So if there are any social sciences which can produce images that will contribute towards healthcare, we are calling on creativity. So the social scientists, we shall not be left behind. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to address the. I don't know, was not sure if it was a question, but it is. Uh, this is Professor Maling raised this quality of care diagnostics. Uh, I think Professor Maling, this is already ongoing, mostly in the residency program. It started well back, in fact, in your regime as Dean of Medical School with the late Dr. Mayanja and Dr. Ngozi, they piloted it for the residency training, that's postgraduate training, where we get pictures and send them over to MGH for interpretation. And we've been, it has really helped the residency program. So I think when it spreads down with this project, I think it can even spread down to the medical students. It's really a very nice thing to teach students with, because not all of them, we have many students right now, not all of them can go and look into, for us we call it the 1%, very small area, where there are so many, all of them cannot go down to look at that. So through this, the pictorials, it's really very, it will help medical training. And to Dr. Oloro, about the, how this can, can be of rural community benefit, uh, I also want to tell you that there was a pilot in Bugoye where where women would go for screening and the pictures transmitted to us here and also to MGH and where there was any query would really, would really interpret that query and really help these women. So it is still very helpful. Thank you. So thank you. Um, my colleagues have uh, addressed some of these questions. Mine will be for emphasis uh, and touch a little bit on policy that uh, was initially addressed by Dr. Tinamasiko. Now, in terms of data management policy, if you are referring to Mbara University of Science and Technology, uh, we, we don't have specific data management policy, but we have IP policy that is in place, which, which will cover issues to do with any innovation, including generation of data, that leads to either uh, new innovations or interventions that serve uh, humanity. But as um, Fred said, 
Uh, NIH, of course, has a policy on how we are going to handle data related to this pro program or project. Remember, I started by saying there is the Data Science Initiative Africa. And that at the end of it all, Mara University will be one of the centers of excellence. So that also covers Professor Kazova's question of what will be left from Mara University. Besides just the servers that uh, Fred is talking about, we will continually be collecting data which can be used for research, for diagnosis, for training, uh, for um, development of new ideas, new uh, programs on either promoting treatment modalities and so on. So it is going to be so robust that uh, we'll, it will be continued to, to provide opportunities for learning and for training. Just like maybe some of you have heard of the cancer registry at, at Mulago, which was started way back, I don't know how many years, before some of you were born. In 1970. How many of you were born after 1970? None of you. Uh, so, oh, all of you. How many were born before that? Some of us. But it's still going on today, and yet it was started in a similar manner that we are starting uh, this um, a data uh, uh, science uh, initiative. And, and so it, it's going to be uh, an, an, in, uh, an interesting opportunity for us to, to bring in the current sciences. You know, I don't know how many of you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to talk like former President Trump about people don't know about artificial intelligence. Um, my assumption is that you people who are born during this computer era the, you know more about artificial intelligence than some of us. And we are harnessing this technology for purposes of improving on how we conduct diagnosis, how we, we provide treatment for patients with, with some of these problems. So it is not something that is coming out of nowhere. It's coming out of realization that technology is changing and advancing every day. We need to be part of that change. We, and if we sat back and we went back to our routine, uh, you know, manual thing. Uh, yes, I can make a diagnosis, but if a machine can help in improving the quality of the diagnosis I'm making, so that is what we should take forward. So in my view, I think um, all these questions are very important. And, and the fact that it is going to be applicable for learning, for training, that means whether undergraduates or postgraduates this is an opportunity for them to learn, train, and conduct research as well. Uh, Fred talked about NIH have, has a strict policy. Um, in his presentation, he talked about open access to this data, but with restrictions. Open access meaning if a researcher from South Africa would want to conduct research in relation to cervical cancer, he is able to apply to access our data and also apply access data from anywhere else where data is being collected. And then it does a bigger research because the more, the more data sets you have, the higher the quality of research you are conducting. And all of you are aware, of course, if you interview 10 people, you get information. But if you are able to interview 1,000 people, you get even richer information. So this is the same, thing. interrogating more data provides higher quality, better understanding, more meaning out of this data that uh, we are going to be uh, handling. So I think largely that uh, covers um, what the questions that were asked. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. My panel, you are doing great. So most of you came here thinking that Professor is a descendant of technology. He's actually a native, you can see, is answering questions of the first 21st century uh, generation. I'm proud of you, Professor, and uh, I'm waiting for your mentorship. <laughs> uh, we shall take the second set of questions, and uh, any other person having questions? Yes? Uh, uh, do we have questions from the online community? Yeah. 
the issue of uh, why have why have related uh, problems? Um, it is attempted to say we need you to think without boxes. You know, the, the normal saying is outside the box, but you can also think without boxes. So don't be constrained in your thinking. Um, when this call came on, we also thought, okay, so who do we bring some more to try to address the initial uh, research focus? And that's why we look for people who knew had data already, images. We look for technology people who really had data in terms of images. We could have gone to people in the because we also know if you can take pictures of the scene and so on, radiology and so on. But we knew that the call came from the National Institute of Health. It is not from the National Institute of Health. Or so, yes, it is about care, but it does not restrict your contribution to her. Meaning, if you think you are a mathematician and you can use any form of contribution, you can participate with colleagues to use your mathematics to generate solutions for care problems. You are more than So we are not the same. We have talked of multidisciplinary, we have talked of multi-professional groups that we are working with. So we expect that the more people think, when you see what is happening, the possibility that you can come on board working with other colleagues, that is what we are interested in. We have not limited it to a group that has come on board. We have indicated that there is an additional another eight, eight to third produce. After this call, we have the Ten. Okay, so it is three, three, four. Yes, ten. So we have ten pilot projects that we want to take on board. And this pilot project is not going to come from this group only. We are going to open it up and say, any idea that you have, we can be We are going to present it. So don't feel that because we are talking about it, because we are the medical projects have nothing to do with that. And so their job is to look at the machine language, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. If you understand the number of machine language, binary, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, eight. That is what they understand. But they are going to translate that for solutions for them. And that's what they're doing. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we only have one question from the online community. Uh, people are saying, How will the masters and PhD students benefit from this program in terms of financing research and maybe scholarships? So, I mean, Okay, um, why do we have training embedded in this? Uh, each, for example, the core, the research core, the two, the kind of core, have opportunities for them to enter, to bring on board uh, either master's or PhDs or postdocs to come on board and conduct research, which is related to their objective. So if you are taking on board as a postdoc, there is an element of funding to research the original. So, so it's not like where they're saying this project is going to offer scholarships for people to come and register for master's and come and register for PhD. No, these are research projects. So if you take on board, you are coming on board to carry out a specific research that you is of interest to us. And so that's why we are asking for 10 pilot research projects that we will, we will be able to support. And we have a specific amount of money for you to conduct your research if your proposal is one of those that will be funded. So when the call comes, uh, we are funding the research activity that we are supposed to carry out. 
we are not we, we are not going to set the discussion together you may go to get a BSc go to ISC or uh, but we are finding discussion which is going to be more data for us to be uploaded for analysis by those different projects for thank you Thank you, Professor. Any last question? Wow. I see your question. Oh, there is a the last question. That is the last question we are taking. Thank you so much. I'm so also. Uh, my question is about uh, safety of the data. How are we going to ensure data safety six years from now? We have had issues in Namibia where, for uh, example, some of our sessions people develop systems and then data. Is removed for reasons I know. So my question is how are we going to ensure that this data we generate safe, say seven years from now? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let uh, Fred answer that. Uh, by the way, Fred is a professor of security. <laughs> computer security. So that question, I think, is going to give us the best answer. Uh, thank you for that question. As part of our infrastructure that we presented, it had water uh, access and security as a core. My whole master's was a master of computer security. So here is that short. And the team we have, Amos, and as well as Lasto. Is also on board, and uh, we will set up this to ensure be the way uh, our systems are set up. So, I don't think we have lost any data from this uh, the last 10 minutes of the system. So, I'm sure the program is really good with the help of my MIT, their support, still um, the highest level security. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm closing this session and I would love to thank my panel and also please clap for the panel uh, as they do. You see, I think I've done my job. I'm now free to do And we're going to approach the next series of metal cases. There is a problem. Do you want to apologize? I officially apologize. The <laughs> same scene is not a metal case, but it's much more simple. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor to be Rogers, but in the rich man. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just before we go to the next session, I would like to ask you if you know the master colors. Do you know the master colors? Do you know the master colors? Just write down your favorite colors. I'm seeing you all writing it now. Just write one color, your favorite color. Professor. I have the reason why I'm requesting you to record. Digital one, do you have it on the hand is? Okay. But do you want to say favorite color? Blue, thank you. Professor Kazova of the three master colors. Copy and paste blue. Professor Boa. Yellow. Uh, uh, Dr. Kim. 
Okay. Uh, I invite Samantha, the young and the ushers. Ushers, please, let's go to the next panel. Um, our colleagues on right, let's shift the, the idea to, to the front. Teamwork, please. All the ushers uh, have written our colors and they are clear that. Dr. Martha, what's your favorite color of the master colors? Which one? So let's green. Okay, yes. Uh, Dr. Ring. Which step I need the favorite color? I want to say the master color, the master colors. Yes. Blue. Okay. Are the brands of this favorite color? Yellow, thank you. Um, yellow has two votes. Okay, in particular, the ophthalmology department. Blue. Wow. Are we telling Dr. Rupungo, the fresh color? Yellow, wow. Dr. Edith, please don't choose yellow. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have before us the cake. And uh, I've had all your favorite colors, and my favorite color is white. So, shall we pick the cake according to the favorite colors you've chosen? And I see you have a my people. So, um, Samantha, you're in charge of this. Yes, um, that's the next event uh, that the prophet is in charge of uh, is going to be quite immediately after we have the final reports. And uh, please keep your colors in fact as uh, we're getting the final reports from Professor Celestino of work. And uh, Professor, do you want to take the floor? Ashes? Professor Sakai is here. Yes, Professor Ichiro is here. Thank you, So, um, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues who are online, uh, and uh, those current. Uh, in the world here. It has been fantastic pattern. We have gone through information session that has given us a gist of what uh, the mentorship program of project is about, the people behind the project, how we work together. I want to give you just um, uh, some secret of what happened uh, during the right here. Uh, so there are some of you who are coming from this area, but you have never been to Kashini. Now, Kashini is about what do you do with this one here? Straight line, but it's about the same thing on the road. But it's a different place compared to Mara in terms of vegetation, in terms of climate, and so on. And we thought the best way to initiate those who are coming to our writing team is to take them where they can think with their feet uh, when it is very cold. So we took them to the machine when it was extremely cold, and we kept them there close to past midnight. Uh, and even those who got there are coming from areas that they enjoy cold weather, they are complaining. And then we told them the secret to our success is that when it's coldest in the middle of the night, that's when they 
getting an idea of come. So we, we, we encourage colleagues of ours to wait uh, our uh, secret of our success and uh, in pain uh, because uh, we were able to generate a fantastic piece of work as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, that from the presentation that you have just you have had today, you you can't agree with me that it was for a very complex run to fight. And it is not a one that uh, many uh, people who attempted were not able to uh, to, to succeed. Uh, I'm aware of several groups that submitted uh, who were not successful. And it was not because they are not good researchers in their writing, but it is because of coordinating the complexity of the application of the main thing and meeting the timeline and making sure that you have everything in place. And the requirement was that you have to have other centers from outside your country. That was the requirement also. You have to make sure that you have another African country or another university from outside your country participating in the right. So it was it was um, uh, demanding, but uh, I appreciate uh, our colleagues who came uh, to, to join hands with us, those who are here today in your stadium, and those who are online from Ghana, Thomas, uh, his colleagues from Ghana, uh, Mr. Kishani from Kansa, uh, who were able to join us with us in trying to meet our deadlines because we have a cheap whip in our writing team. Uh, Dr. Akira, I think if she, I am not sure whether she takes this uh, cheap whip in to Mr. Kundu or to Dr. Kundu's also. But I'm very sure that the hard demand for time, for things to be submitted in time, is perhaps the reason why it was successful. Because he kept everybody on their toes. Even those who are not physically present here felt our uh, friends said, I need these things. He said, time sensitive, time sensitive, bring this information now. And he did, we were able to call together all the design letters of support.
is our, our chancellor, chancellor Nixon Kamokama, who is going to be representing the chancellor to give the final and concluding remarks before uh, Angela entertains us with that rock which is sitting on a uh, on a on a table there. Professor Nixon Kamokama, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are not responding. I'm the Chancellor. Umbara <laughs> University and Science Technology. Uh, I'm called Nixon Kamukama, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of academic affairs. But I've been uh, randomly selected to represent the Chancellor. So, Mr. VC, I hope you'll handle me this evening as a Chancellor. You know what it means. But I'm grateful because my CV is going to be adjusted accordingly. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank this team, and especially the Vice Chancellor and the Principal Investigator for inviting me to be part of this uh, launch where an important research hub is coming to must. VC, at the same time, Principal Investigator, together with your team, thank you for leading the way. You've been next to none. This is uh, something that is written on the walls. But we thank you for taking must to another level. So um, I can see you have a strong team. You can imagine thinking using, with the feet. How? So it is not easy. It's a big task where you are using the brains. Dr. Kagu is talking about artificial intelligence and so on. We are now in a different world and we are happy this team is bringing that modern world to Mbarra City. Keep it up and congratulations. Um, I want to thank this team for three things, especially the principal investigator for promoting the visibility of MAST. We are now competing with international bodies, institutions, universities. A university that is located in the far western part of Uganda is competing with the rest of the world because of this team. That is great. It's an asset. Two, the team has brought a resource to Mbarra University of Science and Technology. That is data. Data is a resource. We are now talking about the knowledge economy. And this is something that must be shared. So researchers, now what is do you have an excuse? Let's get maybe connections. Let's, let us be connected to this team so that we can also pick something. So, um, two, uh, a principal investigator, we also want to appreciate you and recognize you for promoting research and researchers in Barra University of Science and Technology. We have a strong team of researchers. I've seen Dr. Angela. I think this also, Angela, is about to join. 
<laughs> is about to join, to join. We have researchers, Professor Maling, and so on. It is, we have a strong team. That means when it comes to research, Mbara University has a position. Thank you for keeping it afloat. So, members, now that we have an asset here, what next? Dr. Twinamasko was talking about social sciences. And we've been informed. It's about thinking. How do we come in? How do we critically think to bring something on board so that we are connected to this team? But currently, what has been discussed here, we are detached. I'm talking about social scientists. It's about thinking, and there is always space on top of everything. So let's join the team members, social scientists, researchers. You no longer need money to go to the field to do A, B, C, D, because now we are talking of um, a data center of science which will be with us here soon. So, um, my, 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 my role is simple. I've been invited uh, to close uh, this function, a launch, and I hope members, you have enjoyed, you have learned, and I believe from here, the thinking will begin. So thank you so much, organizers. I've seen a hit here, TV. You've not been talked about by all these people. You are doing a wonderful work, and congratulations, because you have also achieved much. We've been reading, and we voted. We appreciate it. We are appreciating what you are doing. You are also taking mass to another level. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your resources. And I believe a lot will be achieved. Let's promote MAST. And we shall be able to be ahead of all these other universities. That is the only way we can take these fast, the fast, the fast aid positions. Because of such research. With some, those few remarks, I officially close this launch. Thank you so much. The Chancellor has not done his part, and I'm going to follow him with the microphone till he does what I want. He is supposed to say, by the powers entrusted to me by the President of Uganda, I now declare this project. You come, you're the Chancellor. <laughs> you want the benefits of a Chancellor, you have to use those words. Deal or not deal? deal. By the powers. Mm -hmm. By the powers entrusted to me by... His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, I declare this launch closed. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, please take care of the Chancellor very well. Make sure he has <laughs> transport refund. And uh, uh, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Chancellor, sir. Uh, by the powers entrusted to me by the Vice Chancellor of Mbarra University of Science and Technology, I invite you to um, dismantle this cake. And I invite, it's cutting the cake, not dismantle. Um, Mr. Chancellor, and the Chancellor doesn't move alone. He comes with the Vice Chancellor and the Deputy Vice Chancellor and the Director of the project. And usually we want to balance colors and gender. I invite the academic registrar, Dr. Martha, who knew the colors of the day. And I'll just uh, invite someone from ophthalmology, please come forward. Someone from ICT, please come forward. Please come running like your, um, 
your department works. Thank you. Ophthalmology, Ophthalmology ICT, OBGY. That one I speak in capital letters. Uh, <laughs> we need someone from grants accountability just for just. Accountability grants office. And if you don't come, uh, uh -huh, that is it. Procurement. Uh, because of your color and complexion and height, you have been selected to come and balance the boat. Yes, are we there? We are counting uh, from the Chancellor's number seven. But are the, the gender is balancing? Seven, six. Okay, let's all hold the Chancellor's hand. Yeah, uh, now shift the hand that side. I'm seeing you. Touch each other, connection. There's no COVID. Doesn't come here. Okay. Uh, no, I mean at the cake. Okay, seven, six. That is COVID effect. We have to count properly. Five, four, DJ, are you ready? Over you in Uh Two, one. Congratulations. Remember the colors that you selected. And the people online, don't worry, I'll represent you. Um, Samantha, please. Do the needful with the ushers. Please help her out. Um, the chancellor eats first. Yes, those things. <laughs> hey, the guy is just a chancellor for hours. Now he's demanding. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, sir, you're going to receive that. And uh, as the cake is being uh, served, I thank you all for coming and sparing your time to be with us. And uh, in a special way, we thank our service providers. Uh, Vanessa baked the cake. So uh, we shall see whether you're a good uh, person in that field. Uh, we thank Igongo. Please clap for them. These people are always our saviors at the 11th hour. And uh, Igongo Management, thank you so much. ATV, you are our partners in crime. Thank you so much. It is live on our Facebook. And as I'm talking about you, you have to film me so that they know that I'm talking about. Yes, ATV, thank you so much. Um, the organizers of the event, our ushers, thank you. Um, these are our students in the university. And uh, we thank you for being here with us, among others. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, as this is going on, uh, Dr. Martha, please come and give us the closing prayer. And after the prayer, housekeeping will detect where we're going. And thank you for always being smart and elegant. You always have the right colors. And please, if you think I'm saying the truth, clap like you mean it. Thank you for always being smart. Thank you, Angela. I know the Chancellor has already spoken, but uh, when I was in school, we used to do a round robin after a class. And uh, in the round robin, we would all go out with what we shall not forget. And there's a word that I'm not going to forget, drip. It caught my attention. Data rich, information poor. Thank you very much. So let us humble ourselves and pray. Yes, let's stand up because we have sat for a long time. Okay, let's humble ourselves and pray. Almighty God, we bless you and we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you particularly for saving us through the last over two and a half years since the pandemic started, but here we are alive and well. But not just alive and well, we are alive with quite a number of projects, particularly 
this project. We thank you for the people that sat through the cold nights. We thank you for the wisdom you gave them, for the zeal and the ability to work. And now, Lord, at this launch, we thank you for what we have heard. And they are going into implementation. We pray that you give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and good health. And for the rest of us, Lord, we thank you that we shall benefit in one way or another. And as we leave this place, Lord, we pray that you guide us and go before us and behind us and besides us. We thank you for every one of us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, let's stay standing for the anthems. And uh, we thank the people in Bushenyi. Though, Professor, you forgot that I came to encourage the team. In Bushenyi, I came, but I, I assure you I took four cups of tea just to get warm. That I took the tea just to make sure that uh, we are having the right thing. We must God's will we shall make the best of us Let us unite and cooperate To build a nation in different states A pride and a goal Mars will shine forever and will be victor. My Almighty, long live, long live, Barrera, University, Ultimo Viva. And may God uphold We lay our fishery in thy hand United, free, fully But together we always stand Africa Mashariki to Ezesha Kuishi Kwa Hamani to Timize na Marengo Yetu Jumuiya Yetu Sote to Wilinde to Wilbeke to Imarik Umoja wetu, mingo zoyetu, indo mujumuia yetu. Thank you so much. Let's have a meet and greet. And uh, someone came in silently. I do recognize the presence of Dr. Tolo Kasim. Thank you for representing. Innovation is always at your hands. Thank you. As we get out, let's have a cup of tea as we meet and greet. Thank you so much for coming and keeping time. Uh, the people online have permitted me to eat their cake. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please make a fair and share peace. Thank you.